episode 61. 62. <laughs> 62. Nice try. Oh, we're still on that 2% variance, I guess. <laughs> still on that floor plan variance. We're on episode 62 where we look at the July market numbers and all their glory. And yes. spoiler alert, they're not very gloriful. It's not a... F- yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a good word. Yeah. Uh, no, they're not great. Let's just, let's just break that yeah. out of the box right away. But we do talk about... Uh, cookies. S- cookies. And uh, terrible trips to a specific town... This Ontario <laughs> town makes people mad. I got a new public enemy in this episode. <laughs> Tune in to find out which Ontario town is <laughs> blacklisted. The vigilante is moving north. <laughs> Euromark. Enjoy. Enjoy. <laughs> Welcome to the Toronto Living's Podcast. A conversation about all things Toronto with a focus on real estate, the culture, and of course, the food. I'm Mark Savell. And I'm Joey Virgilio. And we're realtors with Sage Real Estate working together as a Toronto Livings team with a focus on helping you buy better, sell higher, and of course, having a little bit of fun along the way. Uh, Hello, Mark. Hello, Joey. We are on episode 62. 62, which could only mean one thing. Which means, what does that mean? July market update time. Uh, <laughs> July market update. Episode 62 was meant for a July market update. Yes. And it was meant for it because we didn't do one in June. We didn't do one in June or the month before, I, mm, I don't think. maybe Probably. We You're we, probably right. Yeah. yeah. It's, been a, it's been a little while since we've delved into the numbers. It has. And I think that people are dying to know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> how bad is things out there. <laughs> BlogTO is definitely dying for some headlines. That's, yeah. that's for them, I'm sure. <laughs> Um, yeah, let's get into it. This uh, this uh, month, we'll look at July's numbers and kind of talk a bit further about that. But uh, yeah. start as we always do. Yeah. How was your week? And where did you eat? My week was good. My long weekend, not so good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this uh, what happened this long weekend? I was uh, I was trying to keep Euromark alive. Yes. Um, I'm officially announcing Euromark is dead. <laughs> R.I.P. Euromark. He was supposed to live forever. He was. He had such high hopes two weeks ago. It's never going to change. 14 days in North America. Yep. Wiped it out. <laughs> but we tried to rely, relive, uh, revive Euromark last week, and me and Age wanted to head up to Innisfil. Yep. Uh, we often go there. We like the beaches. Uh, we love Friday Harbor. We're often, you know, going for restaurants, take a quick jaunt up. It's like an hour, maybe an hour and a half uh, to get there, which yep. is the perfect amount of time where you feel you're out of the city, but you're still close enough to you know, not spend three hours in a car. Yep. Anyways, we go to Innisfil and I wanted to go to Innisfil Beach because it is a beautiful beach, incredibly clean, so well kept. Uh, you're right on Simcoe. It's, it's gorgeous. You ever been? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been? Okay. Well, have I got some bad news for you. <laughs> you probably never go back. Um, and spoiler alert, we're not talking about poop on the beach. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, this is a different, different with, headline. Nothing to do with poop on the beach. Because <laughs> I didn't even make it to the beach. Yeah. So we okay. roll into beautiful Innisfil, down the main strip, and we get to the roundabout where you go to park your car. And there's about 10, 15 cars ahead of us. Beautiful summer long weekend. Makes sense. What throws me off is there's like four or five crossing guards or like guys with their crossing guard suits on, and they're talking to these people in the cars. And like, what could they possibly... Aside from like, have a great long weekend. What are you telling these people, right? <laughs> Maybe they're talking about poop on the beach. I don't know. <laughs> Just the warning flag. Yeah. <laughs> so we get to there and, and so the girl says, oh, the next guy will, speak, will tell you what's going on. Mm. I was like, what's going on? So I go to the next guy. I'm like, hey man, what's going on? <laughs> He's like, where are you from? I'm like, Canada. Where are you from? Like, where are you going with this? Where am I from? He's like, no, no. Are you from Innisfil? I'm like, no, I'm from Toronto. He's like, oh, unfortunately... The beach is near capacity. You can't come in here. It's residents only. Ooh. It, very polite. I got to say, he's very polite. I'm over-exaggerating the tone of his. He's very, very kind through it all. And I said, like, uh, you mean I can't go to the beach? He's like, no, you can. You just can't park in this lot. You have to go park elsewhere. So I was like, oh, I saw another lot just up the street. He's like, no, no, that's also for residents only. Oh, get out of here. Got to go find a back street. So I'm still pretty pommel. Yeah, I'll find a back street. How you know how bad can it be? Yeah. And Age is like, no, no, no. There's spots. Like I see spots. Tell them there's spots. <laughs> and I'm like locked in conversation with this guy. Like no, no. You know, just trying to be a good Torontonian. Man, do I wish I said something else at that point in time? Because we went to the back streets. They are all resident only parking. You oh, need a man. permit to park basically anywhere in Innisfil, remotely close to the beach. Oh, get out of here. I was. So upset by that. Oh, and that's an hour and a half drive. Hour and a half drive, which 
essentially made Innisfil public enemy number one. <laughs> I am like so turned off by that town. That's so brutal. Because now it got me thinking, like we talked about this in previous episodes. Should you be allowed in our Toronto streets then? Yeah. People of Innisfil? That's so funny that you bring that up because I was against this and I was like, why are we, why are we ticketing people? Why are we? And uh, Innisfil, I didn't expect this from you. Dude, it was, <clears throat> it was intense. Like we, we drove for a good 10, 15 minutes trying to find parking. We're like, okay, if we have to walk a kilometer and a half, no big deal. Like, right. it's fine. I get it. Euromark is here. Euromark <laughs> is coming back. Well, he wasn't. It gets worse. So now I said, you know what? Screw this. We try to have like the nice organic beach day. I go, let's go to Friday Harbor, the man-made beach town or whatever you want to call it, resort town. And yeah. they have a public beach there. We often go there. Uh, like we will on family day in February, we walk out into the middle of the lake and we use that beach to walk out there. It's yeah. like a tradition. So go, let's go to that beach. She's like, oh, great idea. Pull up in Friday Harbor. We park, we walk, uh, we go to the beach. We're sitting there two, three hours. And I noticed everybody has these like green little uh, wristbands on, which we didn't have. Mm -hmm. It's like, whatever. Maybe they're just like people living here type thing. Go to the washroom. I come back and the lady's like, uh, sir, do you live here? I go, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> I go, what do you mean here? No, I do not live in Innisfil, nor Friday Harbor, but I live in Canada. And this is a Canadian beach, I'm thinking in my head. It's like, oh, sir, well, to use this beach, it's $20 per person. Oh, man. I'm like, ma'am, I've been sitting there for three hours. No one said anything to me. It's a beach. <laughs> no, it's a private beach now. I'm like, but isn't this public to Innisfil? She goes, but you're not from Innisfil. <laughs> Oh, man. So Innisfil, public enemy, number one. And if any of you people come on the Toronto streets, I will be ticketing and charging and forcing a $20 Toronto surcharge. That is crazy. Yep. Oh, I didn't realize they were so strict on that. Dude, it just, it sucked the fun out of summer. Yeah, I would have lost my, I would have killed, that's the that's the death of Euromark it, right there. It wouldn't, that would never happen in Europe. No, if they did charge you $20, you'd probably get a, a sun chair, an umbrella, <laughs> maybe some spray for your face if it's a little hot. A drink in one hand. A drink, yeah. something. <laughs> this wasn't even a towel. This was, you want to step on our beach? $20. That's crazy. Per person. Per person. Yeah. So age was like, she, she was, that, that's ridiculous. We're not going to pay 20 bucks. To, we've been here for three hours. Yeah. So all of a sudden you're going to charge us. So she's like, uh, okay, do you mind if we get a Starbucks before we go? And I was so annoyed. I was like, I didn't want to support the town of Innisfil. I'm like, we'll buy one in the next town. <laughs> we're not, we're not giving this town a cent of our revenue. Oh man. Innisfil, what <sighs> has happened? Oh my God. So this, this podcast episode needs to be like, <laughs> yeah, Innisfil, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> How does this tie into how was your weekend? Where'd you eat? Yes. I was so mad. I wanted something naughty. So I got Domino's pizza. I stuck it to two for one. I ordered a Domino's pizza. You stuck it to two for one. Stuck it to two for one. And I threw cheesy bread on top. Oh. <laughs> that was my week. And that's how I ate. It is Phil. Take a look at this face because you're never going to see it again. <laughs> Nice in Canada dry them all parched. Oh my God. What a story. I did not expect that to come from uh to come from you about the long weekend. Quite the long weekend. And I thought I saw pictures of you on the beach. Uh that was before I was being told <laughs> yeah. to pay twenty dollars to get the hell out of here. Beautiful blue skies, <laughs> nice white sands. We were just minding our business. <laughs> Me and he's sitting on a Muskoka chair. <sighs> and we weren't even near the water. <laughs> that's, the, that's the thing. I wish I would have spent those three hours in the water getting my money's worth <laughs> if I'm gonna steal beach use, you know. We just just sat in these Muskoka chairs, but oh, brutal. I digress. How was your week, Joey? Uh, not as eventful, I'll say. <laughs> okay. Not nearly as eventful as that. No trips to Innisville or cottage country for the matter. I just want to add one thing. So part of it was I thought like maybe this is just us or maybe they're just trying to pull a fast one. <laughs> I went home and I researched. This, it, is, a, this is a real. It's a is, fact. Yeah. <laughs> the city of Innisville does not play around. If you're a resident of Innisville, they require you to get a permit to prove it. And you got to show that permit when was you it, just, it was just too packed over the last little while that they started like making people only only allowing residents to, go, to swim there. I mean, I guess that's the logic that behind it. must have been. But have you seen Toronto streets? Because they're <laughs> a hell of a lot more packed than Innisfil parking lot. <laughs> permits to enter this, like, this realm, man. I'm telling you. I'm getting, uh, my, I'm getting my cross guard shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Vigilante group. <laughs> Vigilante. Hero Mark. <laughs> uh, brutal. Uh, my week was very different. Um, well, my long weekend, no, not, nothing, nothing crazy eventful, but I did, I have a new obsession okay. that I need to shout out. I'm not a big sweets guy, but I do love like any restaurant that does cookie skillet, cookie skillet, a cookie, like in a skillet with ah. ice cream on top. That, that is a dessert. That this sounds is, like a big cookie. That is my, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a big behemoth cookie <laughs> with ice cream on top. 
<laughs> That's your weakness? That's my weakness <laughs> okay. for desserts, okay? And I found uh, this place. So it, they don't do a skillet cookie, but they do warm cookies that get delivered to your door. On a skillet? Not on a skillet. <laughs> okay. But they are warm as if they just got pulled off the skillet. Interesting. Uh, shout out to Midnight Cookie. And it's... Go, go, on. go, on. go on. <laughs> Midnight Cookie. It's right by the office, actually. I have questions. <laughs> The ice cream part, will I add, uh, is my own ice cream. Okay. <laughs> that wasn't one of my questions, but I appreciate you being transparent on that. <laughs> the skillet cookie doesn't come with ice cream, but Joey adds his own ice cream. Absolutely. Yeah. Do they actually deliver it or did you Uber it? <clears throat> We're going to cut this part. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to Domino's after this episode. I'm already mad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you Ubered a skillet cookie that didn't come in a skillet, but was deliciously warm. Yes. Deliciously warm. And you can add your own ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> they might serve ice cream there. I'm not really sure, but they're incredible. And I highly recommend the snickerdoodle. The, uh, excuse me? <laughs> the snickerdoodle? The snickerdoodle <laughs> cookie. All right. Uh, the snickerdoodle cookie or the cookies and cream are the two <laughs> tops it's midnight cookie, all right? Midnight cookie, cookies, and cream is basically a cookie, and then somebody took an Oreo and then just crumbled the Oreo oh, on top of the that cookie. That sounds like heaven. It's a cookie on top of a cookie. What's it called? Just a cookies and cream? Cookies and cream. And what's in the snickerdoodle? Uh, it's sprinkled of... Uh, Snickers? No, it's not. <laughs> I don't really know what it is. It's, okay. it's like cinnamon or something. Okay, we'll have uh, to investigate that one further. <laughs> yeah. But I will say that one pairs with my uh, with my ice cream the best. So episode sixty three, Snickerdoodles. <laughs> um, so follow up question. Yes. What's your ice cream of choice for this midnight cookie? Okay, um, I get ripped on for this a little bit uh, because I have an old lady's taste in ice cream. Okay, pralines and cream. That is definitely an old lady's taste. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I should call you Gail from now on. <laughs> Gail the swan. <laughs> I don't know what it is about pralines and cream, but you match that with a cookie or a muffin. I, I'm getting older by the second. I'm you, turning more and more to Gail as time goes on. Where does one purchase pralines and cream? Any any standard grocery store. I feel like you go to Coartha's Dairy up in like <laughs> the Coartha's. If there's a Coartha's version of it, I will tell you something. That's a special treat. <laughs> How long have you had this pralines and cream... Uh, Oh man, love. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. I would say, I don't even know, like maybe five, six years, seven, no, probably like 10 years. Wow. Okay. Pralines and cream all day long. Okay. Um, and uh, snickerdoodles, cookies. Snickerdoodles and, <laughs> all right. Well, I know what I'm trying this weekend. Anyways, Midnight Cookie. It's on Three Manor Road if you're interested in it and it's friggin' delicious. Show notes, link, website. We'll have all that fun stuff. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, News you can use? Yeah. Should we get into the dark stuff now that we've passed the... Uh... The fun stuff? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What happened Sunday night? Sunday to Monday was a while. Okay. Let's do the sound first. All right. All right. News you can use. Do, 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 do. It's a little bit of... Try to take a look at dark... Little bits of Mark... <laughs> Your <laughs> Mark? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Try to take a dark, dark approach on that uh, tonation there. Oh, do it again. Do it again. I got I got more. Oh, yeah, yeah. News you can use. Do, 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 do. Amazingly terrifying and perfect tone for what we're about to get into. Sunday to Monday, yeah, the world crashed. Yeah, something happened in Japan. They say everything's bigger in Japan. Yeah, and apparently the market crashed hugely. Yeah, from Sunday to Monday, my Twitter was a mess of like, oh shit, here we go, recession time. Forty banks, I think forty banks plus or something like that went into bankruptcy. Really, I didn't know that. Something along those lines. Yeah, I, I. I I really tried my best to understand what's, what happened there. Yeah. And then it went, whew. Yeah. <laughs> I needed a snickerdoodle and some yeah. pralines to this, get through this that is, one. Yeah, this is me also giving headline. Uh, this is me, my blog TO version of what happened. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 40 banks perish in Japan market crash. People are <laughs> upset. People are homeless. <laughs> um, and also crypto crashed or came down significantly. Yeah, I didn't know this. I, didn't I know don't this. know why that happened. I thought... I don't know anything about crypto, to be honest with you. Um, but between Japan <laughs> crashing and crypto crashing, the markets were a mess Monday and Tuesday. Yeah. And that resulted in a lot of talks that the the feds, our, our, our siblings to the south, are going to have an aggressive cut in September. So that's the light at the end of the tunnel we're talking about? That's a word on the street. Well, the word on the street was that they were going to have an emergency meeting and cut it in August. Mm. But that street was actually Twitter Avenue. 
<laughs> Whatever happens on Twitter Avenue is usually <laughs> over exaggerated and doesn't happen. <laughs> so <laughs> take that as you will. I think there is uh, strong proof that September cuts are coming. Cuts are coming. Cuts are coming. Hopefully more aggressive. Yeah. Um, for the sake of everybody here. Yeah. I don't know uh, if that's a great thing considering uh, banks are failing, but uh, <laughs> but I will say it's it's a nice uh, immediate relief if, uh, if aggressive cuts do come. Yeah, we don't want banks to fail. No. No. <laughs> come on, banks. Uh, also, I don't know why, but everybody, it seems everybody I know has been visiting Japan lately. I know why. Uh, because it's cheaper? Because the yen is so poor. Yeah. yeah. So that's what, that's the, the, and the conversations I've had have been like, it's, it's cheaper. It's like, this was the relationship I had. It's basically uh, Ontario pre COVID prices. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, that's the conversation. That should be their slogan come to Japan. <laughs> <laughs> Ontario pre-COVID pricing in effect for all touristies. Yeah. Oh man, imagine we have like Japanese Joey, like Euro Mark and Japanese Joey. <laughs> to, to look in a mirror and know that that exists makes me so happy. <laughs> I feel like people would look at you like, wow, <laughs> he's so big. <laughs> Like, mean, us, us in Japan. Yeah, 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 yeah. Us in Japan. I don't think, maybe they'd be like, oh, he's got freckles. <laughs> I don't know if they have freckles in Japan, but I think they'd be like, Joey, wow. <laughs> Especially if they see you eating a skillet of cookies. Yeah. <laughs> Man, we can make some damage in Japan. I mean, we can do an entertainment thing. Well, I was, yeah, I mean. How sure. much can we eat? <laughs> I'll, I'll just promote the show. <laughs> you could be the talent on that one. How about that? I'll be like the, you know, the guy with the, the shady steak skin guy with the hat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sh- <laughs> straight up. Cowboy witness. Yeah. <laughs> Joey, snickerdoodle, Virgilio. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh um let's get into the market shall we yeah i think it's about time it's about time yeah, yeah. what's in these canada dries i, mean, <laughs> I don't know <laughs> we were parched before and all we had in the fridge was canada dries and uh well they're doing something salute, salute. Yeah, i like canada dry <laughs> okay uh let's get into the july market all right let's do it yeah let's get into the the poor numbers that we're about to get into <laughs> yeah the not so uh Forte, not so strong month that was July. Yeah. yeah. Um, July is an interesting one because it's the start of the third quarter and by design the end of the second quarter. And we now have two trends to look at to see kind of how the uh, the year is going. Uh, and declines are the norm. Mm. July and August, I mean, that's the summer months. Yes, very much. Everybody is in Japan or clearly. Europe. Or Europe. <laughs> yeah. Or, well, I'll tell you where everyone's not. <laughs> in Israel. In Israel. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> Imagine we get like special uh, passes. Um, like, uh, what I'm seeing is that Innisfil might be our, our core listening group and we might be <laughs> causing some very, very poor choice enemies. <laughs> Ruffling some feathers in Innisfil. <laughs> Listen, you can make this right <laughs> by giving us two passes <laughs> to park on Innisfil parking lots and enjoy your beautiful, pristine beaches of Lake Simcoe. Um. Months are slow in August and July. I think that's what I was trying to get to. Yes. Yeah. And uh, this is especially true when the rates are high as we've been seeing. Right. So in saying all that, um, yeah, there have been some drops. We've had two cuts so far, but we're not going to feel or see the results of that, I think, for another month or two. And I think the fall market is when we're really going to start to see the impact of those cuts. I agree with that. I agree that uh, I think fall, we're going to start seeing more activity pick up, uh, especially if there's this like big rate cut, this uh, emergency rate cut that takes place. I think it's going to be a nice little push too. But I was having this conversation recently and I wanted to bring this up because the I think a lot of people are on that debate or that fence of should I buy at the lower price and take the higher interest rate or should I buy at the higher price and take the lower interest rate? Yep. Which direction should I go into? And the way that, okay, if you're optimistic about the way that this market is going to end up, I'd say like you and I feel by the end of this whole thing, I think it'd be, um, you know, if you, if you think about it in a sense of taking the higher interest rate and buy when everybody doesn't want to buy, Correct. you're going to be in a way better position to for negotiations. You're going to have less competition around you. And also, why, in my head, I'm like, why wouldn't you try to ride the appreciation wave when it eventually comes instead of having, instead of paying the higher purchase price, price with the potent maybe your mortgage rate is a little bit less than what it is yeah i wouldn't say that I, they're probably going to keep up with each other yeah um with the way that you, things usually move i'm with you on that I, I think i would also prefer purchasing now at a lower 
historical price versus a lower interest rate. Right. Because I think the assumption that a lot of people have is that rates are going to go back to 1.5 or some ridiculous number. They may sit at three and a half for the next five years. Right. But that might be enough to create more competition in the market. And so you're going to be competing with higher prices and still at a relatively high interest rate. Right. Lower than current, but you're not getting that one five. Right. And there's a lot of transactions that just have not been happening because people have been waiting and seeing. And so it's another big headline that people that we've been talking about and uh, and that the news has been talking about is yep. everybody wants to wait and see where the market ends up, which means all these are, you know, potential delayed transactions. And when things kind of just cool and there's not as much aggressive motion in like it's either going to tank or it's going to take off. Uh, I think that's when people will start dipping their toe back in the yep. water. Um, and those are just just waiting to happen. basically. Yeah. And I think the the biggest opportunity, and we're going to get into it, is is in condo world. We've mm-hmm. been saying this for a couple of months, but it's just time and time again, you're just seeing these prices where I, I scratch my head. I'm like, whoa, that was definitely 150k more two years ago. Right, right. Like this, this absolutely makes sense to buy something like this. And I'm I'm very bullish and very strong feeling that you know, three four years out from this, when because there's been no new construction starts in the city for the last year year and a half. Mm-hmm. We will definitely see a sharp run up on condos, I think, in the next, you know, call it half a decade. Hmm. Yeah. Because that continues to be the most affordable <laughs> option. And uh, I think we're going to see some some good appreciation in condo world in the next four to five years. You know what? They've held their own uh, over the last little while, too. Yeah. Um, and not to die. We can get more into this as time goes on. But they've, they've uh, in terms of volatility, they're, they, they still hold their own. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. And I think, like, as I was saying before, as we get into our, our the start of the third quarter, um, I kind of went back and looked at what the year's been so far, just to kind of get a better kind of reading on where I think this quarter is going to be ending up. And, like, we'll get into it. June was quite dismal. July is also, you know, shitty numbers. Um, but the second quarter overall actually had a sharp improvement from the first. Right. And that was with no rate cuts whatsoever. Right. This, the second quarter did really start to pick up. Um, so I, I do think the third and the fourth quarter of this year, we're going to probably see the strongest kind of side of it. Yeah, I think so. And it's going to, you know, all things considered, <laughs> we should add as part of Japan crashing, there was also fear of war in the Middle East and right. a whole bunch of other, you know, uh, uh, black swan events that could definitely curtail future tra- trajectories. But yeah, yeah. barring none of those happen, um, I definitely think we, we're probably in store for a stronger 2025 than we have for 2023 and 2024. Let's cross fingers. Yeah. I mean, and this is all, we're, we're taking the concept or the the mindset of this is all really good news if you're a seller. Yep. So the future looks really good if you're a seller. But right now, if you're a buyer, the it fu- is, it, right now is when it looks good. It's really good for you if you're a buyer. Yeah. Um, oddly enough, the second quarter saw 1,300 more properties sell than the first. Uh, average prices increased by $150,000 mm-hmm. and days on market declined by eleven. And you know I love days on market for various reasons, but mainly because it shows uh, the the kind of aggression or the the activity in the market. So when you see a, a eleven days is a big jump for it to come down. Yeah, that's a clear indicator that people are back in the the buyer sentiment is starting to pick up a little pick bit. Up. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, they're not letting things sit for thirty days and then uh, and then trying to go for blood. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think like we've, we've been talking for the the media for the last about month, month and a half, how poorly, especially the condo market is. I've definitely seen signs of life in that in the last two weeks, Mm -hmm. uh, just going out there, some of my listings and taking out a couple of buyers. Like I'm starting to see these ones that have been sitting for 35, 40 days. Starting to get snatched up. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Activity is definitely picking up for I mean, sure. We've seen it on our listings. We've had some that have been up for a while and it's just been like, okay, uh, all of a sudden this one property in particular, I won't mention it, but got five showings this week. Yeah. We didn't have five in the whole month of July. Yeah. Yeah. All of a sudden it's like one week this weekend, five. So something's happening. Yeah. Yeah. There's uh, there's movement in the air. I yeah. Think. Yeah. Um, okay. So let's look at the market overall. Um, June kind of ended off week and we saw that trend carry into July. Mm-hmm. Uh, so month over month sales in July were down 13% compared to a week June. Right. Prices declined by nearly 5%. And this is on average GTA. So you know, take this with a grain of salt. Yep. And days on market increased from 30 to 36. That's a 20% increase. Mm-hmm. So just as I said, the second quarter looked good because it came down. Well, this is an indication that the summer months are looking slow <laughs> because yep. it's going back up. Yep. Um, but seasonality. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's a, a really big piece of it. And and again, we're talking about month over month. So this is uh, we're in the in the depths of uh, July was the depths of the summer. Yeah. Uh, so we definitely felt it when everybody just decided to to pull away for a minute. Yeah. Um, and it's reflecting. It's it's very much reflecting of what's uh, what's happening in real life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For sure. 
Um, looking at the 416 sales. Yeah. All segments, detached, semi, towns, condos, they all saw a drop in sales. Yeah. In uh, transactions. In oh, transactions. Oh, thank you. Yes. We yeah. don't use the S word in this podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we identify as transactions. <laughs> 416 transactions saw all segments come down. Uh, semis, our beloved semis, yeah. had the biggest drop, 27%. 27%. Dr- less it, transactions. transactions. Ooh, yeah. I almost said it again. <laughs> it feels dirty. It feels like Innisfil. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. And semis also have the, um, the, I guess, benefit. I don't know if you call it a benefit, but uh, the fact that there's very little numbers in semis. Yeah. So uh, those percentages look very large whenever they move. Good point. So what Joey's saying is there's less inventory of semis than detached than condos. So when an effect happens, it, it's more pronounced. Yes. Agreed. Um, detached. Well, well put. No, oh, thank you. <laughs> Must be the Canada dry. <laughs> yeah. Um, detached homes were down 19%. Yep. Townhouses were down 12%. And oddly enough, kind of what we alluded to, condos were only down 2%. Yeah. So I definitely think we may have bottomed out. I don't know. Let's yeah. yeah. <laughs> there, there, there's still a little bit more pain to come in the condo world, I think, for the few months ahead. But uh, yeah, they've been in the spotlight for having inventory pile up. Um, and April and May were looking strong with 1,300 sales. Uh, but it's trended down and we're down to 994 in July. Yeah. Um, but we've had less movement than the other segments. So people are still pumping along the condo world. Yeah, a hundred percent. There is there is a huge. Uh, this was a this was a uh, a question that like. I don't know. It should it be brought up topic. This could be a whole other episode yeah. that we make about it. But you know, do we have a housing crisis or are we just building the, a lot of the wrong product? Right. Um, that's Great a, crash. That's a, it's, it's a, it is a hundred percent. It's a deep talk topic to get into yeah. because uh, yeah, the con- condo market has been, that's had the worst headlines and yeah. the worst, um, the worst press over the last little bit, yeah. the most inventory um, still funny, not crazy volatile when it comes to price yeah. points. But uh, yeah, they're they're uh, it's it's seeing it's <laughs> it's seeing it's uh, it's turmoil right now. Absolutely, and so that's what got me questioning. Like you know, we talked about we have a housing crisis, but like I don't know. There's a lot of inventory out there. Yeah, yeah. We just built the wrong type. Right, little studio apartments are only helping a very specific type of person. Yep, you uh, cannot put a family of four in one. Last I checked. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's kind of tight. <laughs> Uh, they did get, uh, and, and more on the, I, I pulled these news headlines cause I was like, it, they have been getting a ton of press. That is a, that is a terrible press. So again, if you're a buyer and you can brave through these, I wanted to read these out loud so you can feel them and then understand that 90, 99% of people feel the same way. If you can push past this, I think you can get some good stuff to happen. Yeah. So this is the Toronto star. Uh. The condo market is tanking in Toronto and no one can find anywhere to live. That's headline number one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The headlines are very, very real. Again, it's, it's uh, how do you push past that as somebody who's looking to buy a condo right now? I'm having a lot of conversations that are like this, which yeah. is like condos are doing bad. Do I put all my money into that investment and watch it drop even more? It seems like a terrible time. But again, it's when the headlines hit, that's when you want to jump into it. You got to brave the fear. Yep. Um, the next one, I'll just want one more. Um, condo sales dropped 28%. Again, condo sales dropped 28% in June as market slump falls across all types of housing. Yeah. Financial post. Uh, and I love that it, it does this because this is why we say transactions instead of sales. This is why I re-clarified it because condo sales dropped 28% really indicates that prices are just <laughs> falling. But sales, again, means transactions. Yes, nothing to do with the value of your condo. And we'll get into the number. That, I mean, I could say right now, condos... From seven hundred to seven hundred fifty thousand for the last about two years has been its average price. Yeah, it hasn't moved from that fifty thousand swing. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of the uh, that's kind of the point of like that's the big point of it. Yep. Yes, a lot of investors the math doesn't math. Agreed. So, so you're seeing a lot of investor condos come up. Like the inventory, if you're if you're an end user looking for condo shopping right now, you're noticing that there's a, there's only a handful of stuff that actually you yourself would want to move into. And uh, so th- there's a little bit of a, I think that's why the prices are kind of doing this, this straight line kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's my point I wanted to make. I love it. I, I appreciate you pointing that out because I think uh, as I was alluding to earlier, like Twitter and the media headlines out there really cloud your vision mm-hmm. of what it is. And, and I always, I came up with this, thought very early on in my career because the most common question I got was when's the best time to buy and right there is no exact time it's when you could afford it and you have a steady job mm-hmm. if you have those two things then it's a great time to buy and slow money is real estate it's not meant to make 
two hundred thousand year over year. Like we've been very spoiled, and this is the result of it. Yeah, right. Um, so I think a bit of a mindset change has to happen with how we look at properties and, and really give it a long-term outlook. Yes. There was a lot of, uh, oh yeah, over the last couple of years, it's been, uh, this, it's been quick money. Of course. And then, uh, quick downfalls. Yeah. Um, and that's what, that's, I think any conversation you have, it's, it's, uh, if anybody's asking to purchase anything investment wise, it's the conversation I'm having right now with people is just make sure you hold on to it. Like you have to be holding on to it for at least five years. Yeah. And I would, I would cushion yourself even more than that at this moment. Cause yeah. we're like, we're in a turbulent time. So yeah. Um, you know, don't think of it as a couple months of a flip. Yeah. I like that. Um, average prices. Yep. Shall we? Let's hear it. All right. June and July, uh, two consecutive months where prices saw a decline in all sectors. Yeah. So now we are talking about price. The thing that is important, <laughs> not transactions. Uh, the detached market saw the biggest drop. It was down 6%. That's a $110,000 drop. Yeah. Again, seasonality, don't panic. It's summer months. Euromark was gone. You know, this <laughs> yeah. is the norm. Uh, towns were down 4%. Yep. Semis were down 2%. Um, but in June, they saw a 9.5 month over month. So we're seeing still the trickle effect of uh, townhomes being uh, impacted by the 9.5% drop. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. In June and then two in July. And then condos had the, the slightest, as we were saying, the slightest price adjustment down 2%. 2%. Um, so as, as bad of a wrap as they're getting, uh, they're still holding steady with their average prices. Yeah. Um, they started the year at, at an average price of 710000 and they're currently at seven forty eight. And if we go back in our super spreadsheet, two, three years, it's kind of that the trend's been there. It's been on that line. Yeah. 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 100%. It's, uh, it's less volatile, even though uh, what you're going to see in a second when we get into months of inventory, uh, it has a lot of inventory. Mm. There's a ton on the market mm -hmm. right now, but still, it's not blood on the streets. Yep. Um, I think there's, it, it's always going to boil down to, do we need to sell? And then maybe we'll just hold it for longer if we can't. Yep. Um, so yeah. Yeah. 100%. Should we get into months of inventory? This is where you shine, Jerry. Okay. <laughs> shine your light. Okay, so months of inventory is here. I'll re-explain as I do every time. Months of inventory is basically the amount of time it takes for um, for us to run out of inventory on the market if we were to stop any new listings from being uploaded. So uh, one to three months basically means it's a seller's market and we sell out in one to three months. Four to six would be balanced and then six plus would be a buyer's market. Um. So this is going to feel pretty rough compared to what we've been talking about over the last little bit. And I kept having the sentiment of like, you know, we're talking this buyer's mentality, but still we managed to, the numbers still read as a seller's market. Mm. Not this time. Mm. This one's going to feel a little bit rougher. Okay. So uh, the tightest inventory awards, as we usually go through, the first place goes to semis. Wow. So they, they hold their place as they have for the last, I don't know how long, yep. uh, but they're, they went from 1.9 months of inventory to 2.4. Okay. So we're now getting to that point of like, oh, what's happening? Yes. That's, that's more than I'd expect. Uh, and keep in mind, this is all, this is the whole GTA, not just Toronto. Mm -hmm. Second is townhomes. Mm -hmm. Second place goes to townhomes from 3.1 to 3.7. Okay. So those two segments still in buyer's market, sorry, still in seller's markets. Right. Okay. And they're right about to cusp into a balanced. A balanced. Okay. Yeah. Now this is where it flips because the third place goes to detached homes mm. and detached went from 3.4 months of inventory to a whopping 4.1. So we've officially crossed that line. Four is where it starts and uh, detached homes are officially in a balanced market according to the numbers. I'm going to share some insight why I think so. Okay. Uh, kind of alluded to this before. Detached properties, I think, represent the biggest of low-rise housing, mm. the biggest type of inventory of low-rise housing. It also includes everything from your $800,000 bungalow mm -hmm. to your $10 million bridal path. Eh, bridal path isn't $10 million. Your $30 million <laughs> bridal path mansion. And as you know, everything over $3 million now has a higher land transfer tax. That market's really slowed down. The Uber luxury market's not as hot as it was in years prior. True. So when you hear detached in a balanced market and your budget is 1.5 million, mm -hmm. you're still going to be having a very tough time. It's still very much a seller's market. But if your budget is three to 30 million, yeah, it's pretty <laughs> balanced. <laughs> you might get some negotiating on that one. So just a little bit of context when we're talking about detached, if you're looking in 1.5 million for detached, it's still competitive. You know what? That's uh, that's very, very good that you bring that up because each of these, we remember we're talking at the grand scope of yep. all of these things. So this is like, this is across the board Correct. and for all price points. Yeah. Um, but and nonetheless, there is, there is uh, opportunity depending on what your price point is for a detached. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, and now I'm going to talk about condos, which oh are, yeah, this is the one that hurts probably the most. Should I earmuffs? <laughs> you might earmuffs on this one. <laughs> 
Condos officially have hit six months of inventory. Wow. Yeah. There is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I, um, I don't have it pulled up, but if I'm not mistaken, I think there might be 8,000 to 10,000 wow. on the market currently. Um, and I could be wrong, so don't fact check me on that. But you should, you should tweet it and it doesn't matter. You put it good on point. Tweet, yeah, I'll put it in the streets. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> tweet it in the streets and it's fine. Um, six months of inventory though. Yeah. Now we've, that is the one, that is the first segment and I do not know how long that we've officially hit on paper, a seller's market or sorry, buyer's a market. buyer's market. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, bad news per se, if you are a seller, incredible news. If you're a buyer, yeah. if you're a first time buyer, who's like this Toronto market's insane for the last five years, this is your window. Yeah. And it's not going to be open forever. You don't have to rush it. No pressure here, but you should really be considering getting your ducks in a row and taking a closer look at the numbers, sit down with someone, crunch, analyze, yeah. see if you can, you can uh, make sense of the carrying costs, um, see how it compares to the rent you're possibly paying. Mm -hmm. And uh, like, this is a good opportunity. It is. And we're also in this, de in this decline in the interest rates. So like, you yeah. know, I mean, in an ideal world, if you can make the math, if you can carry that service cost for the next little bit, I, I, I would be, and I'm going to bite my tongue for saying this, but I would be optimistic that by, you know, let's say you, you take a three year fix by the end of that, you're going to be in a better situation than you were, than you started. I think that's a fair outlook. Obviously we're not holding you to it, but that's, that's realistic to think about. And you brought up a really good point is in all other market outlooks we've had for the last two years, the question has been how high can we go in terms of rates? Mm -hmm. There was no end of sight. Every cycle was, we're going to keep increasing these rates. This is the first time where we've seen two cuts. And the sentiment is that there's more coming. Mm -hmm. So we have to mind shift a little bit from where we were two years ago of like, oof, 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 yeah. to like, yay, yay, yay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well said. <laughs> right? I think that's the big difference here that before we, we didn't know where the end was in sight and we still don't, but we at least know that relief has come. Yeah. And from the sounds of what happened in Japan, crypto market and everywhere else in the world, there is huge sentiment the vibes are strong yeah the vibes the are uh, yeah exactly the vibes are strong the conversations keep happening yeah that we're we're getting to the point of this uh this attempt at a soft landing yeah which means that they need to bring rates to a reasonable spot for any renewal that comes up and that's where the the tricky spot is going to end up being for anybody who took that two-year fixed or yeah. two two percent five-year fixed uh that's going to be coming up in 2026 we'll see where it lands but i would be optimistic right now that by the time a three year fix ends, you might be in a better spot than you I think so. Yeah. I think I would take that route if I was renewing, go for three years and just kind of, uh, I'll probably go three years fixed. Yeah. Get some stability, see where the markets is then, and then, uh, make a decision three years when we have a little bit more clarity with where things are landing. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, I'm not going to say the name of this bank, but one of the big a representative <laughs> VP from one of the big five banks, yeah. Off the record, shared his prediction to me that he thinks by spring of 2025, rates are at 2.5%. Hefty. That's what I said. Hefty guess. I, I don't know how many espressos he had that morning. <laughs> a couple ginger ale. A couple, couple, couple of Canada dries, a couple soda pops. <laughs> um, I don't... I, I was like, nah, man, I don't think it's going to go that low. But he was quite confident that for what he sees, it's, it's a potential. Interesting. And I don't... And a part of me is like, man, he could be right. Because I remember like just before the run up, uh, I had about eight months renewal on my property. I had eight months before I had a renewal on my properties. Yeah. And Scotia was calling me like daily to lock right, in. Right. Not to lock in, to renew my rate earlier. And so they must have had some type of insight that pain was going to be coming. Let's try to get as many people in as possible. Um, and so, you know. Bankers do often have a little bit more clarity in their crystal ball than us on the outside. Mm -hmm. 2.5? It's, it's, oh, it's, it's a big push. I don't know. I think that's a little aggressive, but hey, crazier things have happened. Yeah. Look at Innisfil. Look at <laughs> <laughs> Look at Innisfil. Absolutely. What, what can't argue me, that. What pains me is I love that beach so much, and I may never step foot on the pristine green grass and beautiful you, white sands. You know where you need to be shopping, I think, is what, if anything, this is a push towards what you, where you should be leaning into. Am I missing the opportunity here? <laughs> is the universe presenting me with a wonderful opportunity? Well, I'll tell you this. I've been looking at property in Portugal. Because... <laughs> Uh, those beaches are going to be a little nicer than uh, I, you know, uh, yeah, we'll see. I was looking in the Algarve and it's, uh, it's quite interesting. There's a really modern looking building. Um, 
and a one bedroom there is about 800,000 Canadian. Okay. Yeah. So it's not like, okay. Yeah. But this is a super modern, really like done to the nines building. Is it a uh, big one bedroom? Uh, yeah. Yeah. 700 square feet. Okay. So it's not sticker shock. Uh, that's what I'm feeling. Right it definitely now. is for Portugal. <laughs> it's, it's, it's quite expensive for where it is in Portugal, yeah, but not for here. For here, it's it's slightly higher than where we are now, but yeah. I mean, it comes with a beach. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. It's facing the ocean. <laughs> it's kind of nice. <laughs> uh, we'll see. Um, all right. Well, I think that's a good place to uh, to nip it in the bud in terms of the market that was. Yep. Um, I think when you hear from us in four weeks talking about August, it's going to be a similar tone. Yeah. Um, but I will say there's life in condo world. Uh, we, we went to go look at a bunch of properties and I think we saw five properties. And by the time I called the agent, cause my client was interested, which was in the afternoon, two of them had offers already. You know, it's so funny that you say that even, uh, even in July had the same situation was, was, was shopping for places. And then even when they've been sitting for 24 days plus, it's yeah. almost like everyone is almost too patient with it mm-hmm. because it lets people get interest on the, on yeah. the place. So same thing happened. We were looking, looking, looking. And then the second we were like, you know what? Let's push the button on this one. All of a sudden, two people showed up out yeah, of nowhere. It's happening. Yeah. It's happening. Um, and the next Bank of Canada meeting is September 4th. September, I think. 4th. September. Early September. Yeah. Pretty sure it's a 4th. All right. Yeah. Cool. All right. Any shout outs? Yeah. Midnight Cookie. Midnight Cookie. Midnight Cookie. Three Manor. Three Manor. Okay. Right near, uh, right near our office on Young. And try the Snickerdoodle. Snickerdoodle, shout out the Snickerdoodle and we, the cookies and cream. We got to see if we could do like a secret menu. What is it? What is it? What do you a mean? Secret menu. So like, um, remember Burger Priest? Yeah. Oh, well, you can order off menu. Yeah. basically. Like the Vatican was like one of the secret burgers. I wonder if you can. Yeah. So you know what I can say though? You can't do it on Uber Eats. No, we don't support Uber Eats. So Uber Eats is not part of this dream. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> the secret message is not Uber Eats. Yeah. And then they give you the secret menu. No, like a Joy the Swan, Parlines and Cream, Parlines? Oh, Pralines. Pralines. Pralines and Cream. Pralines and Cream. Yeah. I'd, I'd be into that. Yeah. Okay, we got to talk to them. Yeah, let's collab. Yeah. We'll bring them a Skrillex? What was that thing called? Skillet. Skillet. Skrillet's a DJ. Skrillex. Skrillex is a DJ. Bring them a Skrillex. Bring them a Skrillex. Have <laughs> next party. Skrillex. Skillet. 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 Okay, shout out uh, Midnight Cookies. Shout out Midnight Cookies. Shout out Domino's. I've been a long time Domino's pizza fan. <laughs> I have, yeah, yeah. So two for one and Domino's. Two for uh, one, still number one. Domino's is a close second. The sauce uh, in the peak of my acid reflux was hard for me to digest, so I kind of veered away from it. But I still go back on those rough weekends. Oh, boy. Like what I had. Yeah, we got to have a pizza talk at some point. What, did you, was it Brooklyn Pizza's your go-to? North of Brooklyn's amazing. North of Brooklyn's your go-to, yeah. yeah. Actually, I, I had a, uh, they do special, they do a special pizza uh, once, I, got, I don't know if they, how often they change it, once a month maybe? Uh. The Maui Wowie. Is that from North of Brooklyn? North of Brooklyn. Maui Wowie. Incredible pizza. Is there fish on it? No fish. It's okay. uh, it's pineapple sauce <laughs> and <laughs> bacon. <laughs> oh, bacon's good. Bacon's good. And uh, oh, there's one more ingredient. Oh, jalapenos. Bacon, jalapenos, jalapenos and, and that. But the pineapple sauce is the special touch. The sauce? Yeah. Oh, it's not chunks of pineapple? It's not chunks of pineapple. Mm, I try it. It's worth it. It's worth it, eh? Yeah. It hurts. When I order them, I eat too much of it, though. I, I tried my best to get through the large, and I usually fail on a couple of slices. It defeats you. It defeats me. Wow. These days. Wow. These days, my gut, I've just taken not good enough care of it over oh, okay. the years. <laughs> I was not expecting it. I thought you definitely <laughs> conquered that. All right. Well, um, shout out <laughs> the Maui Wowie Pizza from uh, North, of Brooklyn. North of Brooklyn. Yeah. And Domino's. <sighs> Vamanos, Domino's. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I got. Yeah, that's it. All right. And uh, no shout out to Innisfil. No shout out to Innisfil. No shout out to Innisfil. Unless you give us free tickets. Two free tickets to your beach. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. This is what this podcast has come to. <laughs> Begging the lonely town of Innisfil for access to their public beaches. Of course. Our loyal listeners. Oh, uh, gosh. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy. Thanks for listening to the Toronto Living's Real Estate Podcast. You could find more information on how we work over at torontolivingswithans.com. Be sure to sign up for our newsletter to get price reports from over 150 different neighborhoods in the city each and every month. If you got any value, please like, subscribe, and share with your friends. And if you made it this far, thanks for listening.